Welcome to Sew Like a Pro Time. I'm Teresa Sigmund and you are in the right place to learn to choose, alter, and make the dance sport, country, and skate dress of your dreams. In this two-part series, we're going to break down this classic ball gown. Today, we're going to talk about the design elements, and then in part two, I'm going to talk about how to change it if you want to make alterations, to update it, or to make it a little more revealing. But let's start talking about design. This is what I call a symmetrical asymmetrical dress because the neckline is a very classic sweetheart, very symmetrical. It slopes gently underneath the arms, goes to a very modest V in the back. Once again, very symmetrical and then has the exact same thing going on on the other side. So that's as far as our neckline goes. So very symmetrical, really classic. But what you notice as you're just even looking at it here is this splash of black that cascades off the side, making it dramatically asymmetrical. And what makes that even more asymmetrical is that, I have a squeaky dress form, is that there is this sheer accent. Oh, there we go. So I have one layer of chiffon or georgette in here for a really striking accent. Now, some of you may be thinking, oh, well, I can't wear this bright green. But if you can wear black, then you can wear the dress. Now, the really great thing about having two color dresses is that you get to kind of have your cake and eat it too. So whereas I would not wear this color up against my face, I would absolutely wear black. I'm a winter, so I always wear jewel tones, pure white or pure black. Usually I just avoid white because I'm already so white, but you get the idea. So if you're a spring, a summer, a winter, whatever colors look best on you is the color that you would put up against your face. So for instance, you could do um, a pretty maroon with a soft pink. You could do a hunter green, or if it was a skate dress, gray would be beautiful in the ice rink. I don't particularly care for gray on the ballroom or country floor because it kind of gets all muddy looking with all the brown floor, but in the ice rink, gray looks great. And um, so you can absolutely two-tone it. You could do fuchsia with a pale pink. You could do really contrasting colors such as the blues in this. Now, as you're choosing your colors, and this brings me back to an another good topic, is when you have a really dramatic dress like this and you're doing two colors, try to, um, for me anyway, I like to keep a clean line. I like very simple, uncluttered design. So the fact that I'm even wearing a print, this is one of about six, maybe eight things that I own that are printed. Otherwise, I'm very much a solid person. So my design tastes are not your design tastes, which are not the person sitting next to you's design taste. And that's the cool thing about it. So as I'm giving you all of this information, it's so that you can take out little nuggets and incorporate it in things that you like and on styles that look good on your body shape and size or if you're making dresses for others, you know, on their body shape and size. Um, so as you're doing a two color dress with very dramatic lines, for me anyway, I like to keep it so that the viewer does not have too many things to look at. So as you're watching this, your eye keeps wanting to go, oh, what's over here? <laughs> what's over here. It's just human nature. So despite the fact that this is a very simple dress, it is not boring. It has a lot of interest to it. And there's um, a lot of stonework on the black area, but there's none on the green. So once again, the eye has a focal point. It doesn't just get overwhelmed with where do I look because there's too much going on. This Skirt is a, a straight, <laughs> easy for me to say. <laughs> it's a straight skirt, obviously. <laughs> There's nothing in the hem, it's, which is great for country western or American smooth dresses. Um, 
you could if you like the overall look certainly add more volume to it for us if you like this concept for a skate or a latin skirt by all means just put a shorter skirt on it <laughs> it works the same the principles are the same one of the things i particularly like about this which will come back which I want to, to revisit is this sheer panel. Now on here, I rhinestoned some, but not all of the skirt, of course, because why waste a bunch of money on rhinestones that are covered with the top fabric? So it just, as the skirt expands, let's see if I can get back here. As the skirt expands, as you spin, then you get this little splash of color. This would absolutely work for any type of Latin or skate. It would just be, you know, about this length or even a little shorter, but you would have this chunk of color. How wide you go over here is really personal preference. This dress was made for a junior, so it is a little on the modest size, modest side, but you can certainly make that your own, whatever works for you. One thing I do want to tell you, if you're making your own dress or altering your own dress, this is one of the, the biggest things is that I would love for you to take away from this is if you are using a stretch fabric for your dress, by all means, line your skirt with a non-stretch fabric. This is a Georgette or a chiffon as we call it here in the States. And the reason for that is so that you don't get your heel caught in the skirt and rip you know, rip your heel right through it. And you've seen it, if maybe it's even happened to you, you're dancing along and suddenly your heel goes, uh, <laughs> and it just sticks there. And you're, you don't really know that your heel is caught in it yet until it completely rips through it. And then you have to stop and pull the skirt off the bottom of your shoes and then keep going. So, and that's just, it inevitably happens on a lot of dresses, but if you line it with a lightweight non-stretch fabric that greatly reduces the odds of you getting your heel caught in it because it doesn't stretch your heel just kind of comes right out of it there we go <laughs> i couldn't get it your heel is just going to slide right out of it lastly one more tip here that is not design related this um, skirt is really staticky Get Static Guard. I'll give you the link below. Static Guard here in the States. Grocery stores carry it in the laundry section. Target, Walmart, uh, Walgreens, a lot of places carry Static Guard. Um, and then, so I imagine overseas, your general stores, it works great. It is highly noxious and nasty smelling. So take it outside and spray it. And I'll literally, I'll just come in and spray all the layers and it will be good to go for months. I know you hear me talk a lot about asymmetrical designs and the reason that I like them so much is because they really do cover a multitude of sins, so to speak, or a multitude of asymmetries because your eye is wants to go look over here. So thereby, if you have one hip that sticks up more than the other, it's going to be less obvious because the eye is being drawn the opposite direction. Or if you have, let's say a tummy or wide hips that you want to camouflage, this steep asymmetrical line is very elongating. So it makes this person, this dress form look taller because it's so dramatic and long and vertical, but it also just keeps taking the eye. It makes the viewer look where you want them to, not where they want to. So that is it for today's blog. Thanks so much for joining me for part one. Next one will be part two, and we're, I'm gonna talk about how to make some changes in this dress. All right, and if you have not already done so, please go to sewlikeapro.com, leave me your name and email address, sign up to receive the blog so you never miss one of these awesome, easy design tips. Lastly, please share it with all your dancing, skating, sewing friends. Thanks so much, I will see you another time.